I don't know, just like to have like a big, big set of speakers in my living room and like the the space in my apartment where it's not, you know, it's not my work zone. It's like literally yeah. my home zone. And sure. then you're just kind of like, okay, like let's just put a record on while I'm like making dinner or while like my son is crawling around or whatever. And it's just, it's just like, it gave a new whole new, like, I don't know. I was like back like 10 years earlier or whatever. You know what I mean? And just kind of like listening to music for for the pleasure of it. Yeah. You know, I, I have a little bit of the same experience, um, but I think that I... I, to be honest, I, my my home stereo system is not uh, it's it's not great, and it's also like just like far like I do a lot of cooking, and it's like far away from my kitchen, so I'm kind of listening from afar. And I think it it is helpful to shut my brain off a little bit in that like if I'm listening to music on headphones, it's hard for me to not be trying to crack what they're doing yeah. or trying to catalog uh, ideas yeah and, yeah you, you know what i mean just like over analyzing stuff whereas like if you're yes if absolutely. you're not hearing things in so much detail sometimes it's a little easier to just listen as a listener yeah i just enjoy the the thump or whatever yeah exactly <laughs> so you told me right before we started recording this episode about how you moved away from you're like i i recently started pro tools and before that i was like waiting for like logic or cubase and you're like yeah uh, ssl board and i was like oh man <laughs> so so yeah. so tell me about your your transition from the ssl into pro tools why you made the move and and how it's going yeah well so i guess i should ask like how technical are people usually in this stuff because i could i could talk really theoretically I, I, or i could talk really specifically about it i would say uh, somewhere in between cool i don't i don't want to like overly nerd out on like the super yeah, fine sure. details but but people should understand i guess Work, yeah, like I don't know, s- signal flow and stuff. I don't know. Sure. Whatever. Well, so I, I started out on an SSL four thousand board, um, and that's that's how I learned. How, you know, that's the the first thing that I learned how to do basically everything on. That's how I learned how to EQ. That's how I learned how, compression. You know, all, all of those things I learned through the facility of of that board. Um, and we have two at the studio, so it's you know I was really immersed in it. Are and, they both E E or G or? Uh, one of them's an E, and one of them's a c- combination E G. Okay, um, cool. And it's yeah, but but um I I think that I through learning on that console I feel really really lucky that I it's pretty rare nowadays for people to get the opportunity to learn how to EQ on a on an SSL console or on just any yeah. console period. Like most people are learning pro tools and then once they have built up enough, they will get to go to a real studio and have to learn that, but they're really they're translating the act of of using pro tools uh you know using plugins and translating that into uh how to use board rather than doing the opposite which is you know i learned on the board and and then figuring out how to how to use um how to use pro tools plugins based on that and because of that i think there's a lot of stuff that it kind of instilled in me which is like being really decisive with what you're doing because when you're you're mixing on an ssl board um the recall system works, but it's not by any means perfect. And it's also, uh, you're working with a bunch of outboard gear that has to be recalled as well, which like it just, there's no situation where you pull up a recalled mix and it sounds the same as your mix did when you, when you left it. So the mentality is really, I'm mixing and at the end of the day, this mix will be finished. And it, I, I would do something, which is I, I would print stems of each instrument so i'd print the drums together i'd print usually guitars and like pairs you know stereo pairs or or all the guitars together you know whatever and um and then i would uh have that to make changes later but it's pretty limiting in terms of what you can do like you can change volumes you can change eq and stuff like that but you're a hundred percent committing to the drum mix at the time that you that you mix it you're completely committing to any effects that you're putting on it like you can't subtract effects without having to remix the the vocals into the into the song for instance um so it's it's just a completely different mentality of of at the end of this day this song is done whereas if you're in pro tools there's something in the back of your mind that says like okay if i don't nail it right now that's okay and i can come back and tweak and tweak and tweak totally um so yeah so, so you yeah have, I, you, have, you have a lot less fear i guess yeah you have a lot less fear yeah and you have a lot less you know yeah you just kind of have are forced to forced to commit and i it, it the the thing that made me change was honestly partially just being inspired by 
um, you know, by by peers and by just people people who I admire, who I know are are working in in super hybrid ways or, or working um, entirely on on uh, Pro Tools. Um, but also, it's just a practicality thing because a lot of a lot of people, you know, I'm mixing for people uh, overseas and people in different states and stuff like that. And also people who are hyper indecisive in a way that is only possible in 2020 and is just like not like, you know, there, there's no um, the Beatles were never uh, asking their engineer to change the <laughs> snare sound entirely <laughs> once, it, you know, once it was recorded. So it's just like a, a change in mentality of musicians that you kind of have to be able to to work within right you have to like bring yourself up to date i guess to, yeah. to stay relevant as like a producer exactly yeah you have to you have to be able to go with the flow is there is there anything you miss about the ssl now that you're not like absolutely yeah i miss a lot of things about the ssl i really miss um the simplicity of saturation in it which is like mm. if 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 i if i want something to get more saturated i turn it up and it gets more saturated naturally and that's like such a it's such a pleasure to i feel like so many things that we're doing as engineers is trying to um replicate that trying to rep or, or even just trying to get rid of the um any barriers between what you're feeling in your head and what you are making happen in the music right so like if if there is if you don't have to pull up any plugins and choose which plugin you're going to use and do all this stuff you can um just turn up a fader and i feel like there's a, a ton less left brain involved in that and so there's a certain flow that saying. you can kind of get into with and and it also like you can um like if you're eqing on an ssl and you've been doing it for for the amount of time i've been doing it you do it with your eyes closed basically you know what i mean you know physically where the knobs are and you're not really worrying about how what the meters read in terms of or what the what the knobs read in terms of how many decibels of something you're adding you just keep adding it and it just makes it really music it's a really musical way to work it's it's all instinct based and there's no you know there's certainly times now where i'll i'll start adding high end to something and i'll you know my finger will start trembling when i'm getting up to like you know 20 decibels of high end that i'm adding to something <laughs> and it's just a, a thing that would never happen on a on an ssl because you just keep turning the knob until it feels good and you're not really worrying about you know what the what the reading is yeah that's like a really interesting way of of putting it i never i never thought about it because i don't have any experience working on an ssl Got like, you. board so it's, i don't i don't know what that is but like a, a big i totally also, feel that yeah sorry yeah. go ahead Overanalyzing, no, and you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't push it that high. That's a lot of dB. Like I've I've had that thought a lot, you know. Yeah, it's ever that's something that everyone has to fight is is mixing visually. That can be, you know, I mean, there's there's uses for it, but it can also be really debilitating in terms of just your yeah. creative freedom with it. Yeah. There, what were you going to say though? Because I cut you off. Uh, what I was going to say is like the the automation is also something that I really love on an SSL, which like I haven't been able to totally recreate. Um, in in that like you would um you'd kind of mix with with scenes in mind uh when you're mixing in the in the style that i was mixing which was like you're automating in real time like once you once you kind of have everything together you're automating in a way that is you're just trying to take one pass through the song and nail the automation as much as you possibly can right so you'll you get to the you know you're recording for a while and you you have a a a, a balance that's really good for the verse and when you get to the chorus all of a sudden the balance doesn't feel right and so you will go and turn up the guitars and maybe turn up the master fader a little bit and turn up the compression on the drums and like all these things that like you kind of naturally do while it's playing to get the balance to feel right and then you rewind and you get to the chorus and you punch in right when the chorus comes in all of the physical places where the faders are come online when you punch in and so there's there's a a a way to work that is very like scene based and very uh not like you you could just do it so quickly and so naturally that it just seems to happen way quicker for me um and it also um you can sit there and ride a vocal fader and and you're following your instincts and not really following the uh visual of how loud the vocal is or you, you know you're 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 not really worrying about that you're just worrying about the relationship of it to the music and what's coming out of the speakers very cool 
Wow, that <laughs> sounds like a sounds like a worthwhile experience. The Can way that I'm eight, talking huh? to you, I feel like now I I sound like I should go back to mixing on the SSL because it sounds like I really miss it. But tr- truthfully, I I'm incredibly happy working. I don't know that I could go back to mixing on the SSL right now. I I've well, gotten yeah. I've gotten so um, I've dug my heels into mixing in Pro Tools so much, and there's so many things that I really love about it that I couldn't do on an SSL that like i don't know that i could i don't know that i could go back right now without yeah. without dramatically it's like, it's like once you have things. a smartphone how could you go back to exactly you know? it's like you just kind of have built your life around it and it's yeah it, that's what it is that's what you need now i totally hear that uh, are there any tools specifically that you're using inside of pro tools that help you recreate that that ssl sound yeah the the, the way that i've kind of approached it the the truth is that i'm not really looking for an ssl sound when i'm mixing anymore you know i i I love the ssl plugins i love pretty much all the ones that are out there um and i use them all the time but i'm certainly not not trying to get exactly that punchiness or that you you know those those things that you kind of relate to an ssl um but the the way that i deal with um just missing mixing a con on a console in general is i have a really loaded master bus and I have a lot of stuff that I use on it. And I pretty much start with most of it on right, right away. So I, I my mixes basically sound like nothing without these <laughs> things on there because I build them all going into it. And so uh, because of that, I can get the same kind of feeling, which is like turning up faders and it mm. starting to saturate. And, and you, you know, I can get similar similar things. I just have to take a lot more active steps towards it whereas gotcha. you know whereas before it was just kind of there it's built in it's built in yeah now i gotta build it in and so and so, so i use a so lot of like, you, templates and stuff uh-huh yeah yeah totally like you're using like like virtual console emulations and that kind of stuff uh, or more like saturation plugins a little bit mostly saturation plugins mostly just like i you know i i'll have like um you know, a, a, a pull tech on my master bus, for instance, which is like, you know, doing a little bit of like a smiley face thing. And but if you turn up into those plugins, they'll start to act like a pull tech will act in a, in a lot of mm. ways, you know. So so and I have a few different things that are that are doing that. I really like the like Oxford inflator. I'll, I'll use that a bunch of times on mixes and and um, yeah, and tape, you know, tape plugins. I like satin a lot and things like that. That'll just start to start to react harmonically when you push into them and also st- you know in like tape machines start to react dynamically a little bit too nice that's awesome yeah do you have any practices to stay fresh and creative in your workspace like everybody goes through the doldrums <laughs> occasionally it goes oh yeah you're saying just just when you're kind of stuck yeah yeah i the the thing that i try actively to do is i try to not use the same tools as much as i can Right. So I have things that I know will work. And there's a lot of times when I will actively not be using them um, because I think there's something really positive about making a mess for yourself to clean up like that. That I think makes more interesting music. And there's, um, you know, I just recorded a song a couple days ago and I we were going for just kind of weird off kilter tones. And so I was using headphones to record the toms, just headphones sitting on the toms. And I, on purpose, did not, I had put up mics that were my backups if I, if it wasn't working. And I, I could have easily recorded those as well. And I chose not to, like, I, I didn't plug them in. They were just there as backups specifically because I wanted to force myself into a corner that I had to kind of fight my way out of, um, so that I, so that I couldn't just rely on, you know, I've been doing it long enough that like I know I can make some toms recorded with 421 sound good. You know, but like, <laughs> it's, but whether or not I can make them sound like no toms you've ever heard is a completely different story, and that's what is exciting to me. That's what's interesting to me. So, so I think that's the kind of stuff that kind of keeps you on your toes is just constantly being fearless with it and trying to make make messes for yourself and not take specifically taking away tools from yourself in order to force yourself to be a little bit scrappy. I like that. It's, it sounds to me like when you're recording, you're kind of in a headspace of like, how can I like make this completely different? And when you're mixing, you're like, okay, I got this template and like, I'm going to rely on like, uh, like these, uh, the stereo bus stuff to kind of do that. The, the things that sure. I know will like fix things up. 
Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I also try to do it with with the, the mixing as well in just like trying to use di- like I try to use different things. Like my mix template, I would say I change it. 